Good morning, everybody. It is Abby from Alaskan Oasis Homeschool Collective, where we are building a collective of global literacy coaches empowered with skills in direct instruction, precision teaching, PACs, and SDE. Thank you for being here today. It is the third week of the Finding Our Hearts workshop series this fall. We are in... Um, we're in the hunter's moon cycle. Just two days ago was the full moon of this um, moon cycle. And week three during the full moon is when we are making decisions. That's what we do during this time of the month. It is Friday, October 22nd, 2021. And our um, celebrations and remembrances, observances for today are Stuttering Awareness Day, Making a Difference Day, and Book Pitbull Awareness. I am Abby Twyman, our land acknowledgement. Today we are coming to you from Clinket Ani, the traditional homelands of the Clinket, Haida, and Simshian people. We honor the ancestors, past, present, and future in all we do to protect and uplift uh, the people of this land. We synchronize all of our work to the moon cycle. Beginning of the month, during the new moon, we set our intentions. In the first quarter, we are exploring our possibilities. At the full moon time, we are making decisions and sealing and releasing our intentions. And at the end of the month, during the final quarter moon, we are reflecting, resting, and preparing ourselves for the month to come. At our Last Minute Oasis Homeschool Collective and in all of the work that we do. We approach life from a humanistic behaviorist perspective. I am a behavioral scientist, creative writer, and a data-driven optimist, and I hope that you being here is demonstrating that you too um, live your life in that way. So, thank you so much for being here, and thank you so much for all you do for your families as homeschool parents. Today is Friday. It's full bore Friday. As a reminder, every day of the week, we have a daily challenge that is posted on our Facebook page. We have a private Facebook page for our collective members. We have a public Facebook page for any for everybody out there um, who is interested in following the work that we do. Um, and then we also have our um, newsletter that we send out on a weekly basis to our homeschool families. Um, our challenge today on Full Board Friday, um, we have the, uh, the fact of the day, this day in history. Um, October 22nd is when there was a coalition of civil rights, um, uh, civil rights groups that staged a demonstration for Freedom Day, which was a mass boycott um, against segregated schools and inadequate resources for African-American students in Chicago. Um, there's the link there to read more about this fact in history. As I mentioned, it's also Stuttering Awareness Day, um, Make a Difference Day, and Pitbull Awareness Day. Um, many of us know uh, people who experience stutters and um, or maybe experience stutters ourselves and have uh, experienced the challenges that come with that. And so we encourage you, implore you to learn a little bit more about um, stuttering and its you know, causes and what, um, you know, how we can support those in our lives who experience that. Um, Make a Difference Day, I found in doing research um, in the place I was born in Wenatchee, Washington, they have a list of projects for um, Make a Difference Day. So I wanted to share that with you, maybe to spark some ideas for yourself, things that you could do to make a difference today. Um, and then finally, it is Pitbull Awareness Day. Our first dog together, my partner and I, was a pit bull. Her name was Marley, and she was the love of our little lives. And um, so pit bulls hold a very special place in our hearts. And uh, so we wanted to share that with you. And um, if you have any doggy pictures, please share those with us because we love dogs and all sorts of other animals. In review of our agreements, when we come into our group for our workshops, any of the work, every or all of the work that we do is centered around these agreements to protect, lift, inspire, and empower others. We listen for understanding and take responsibility for any hurts we might cause. 
We are committed to being more impactful with our actions. At times, if things get um, out of sorts or we're, you know, we need to take a pause or a break, we pause to regather our thoughts rather than pushing forward to ensure that we're moving forward intentionally. Um, we drop gems. If you hear anything that you want to save, just save those, save those little nuggets of wisdom, those little gems, um, by writing them down and sharing them with us. Things that really sparked some thoughts for you. If you're here live and in person and you have an opportunity to share and don't feel comfortable, you are always welcome to pass. And we always focus on using sound verbal behavior, which is measured and deliberate speech to ensure that the intention of our message is met with the impact that we have. So at, at um, Alaskan Oasis, we always say, are you down to FBT? If you say yes, that means that you agree to for really listen, be radical, and take action in all the work that you do. Our values at our Alaskan Oasis Homeschool Collective are to act with pride. Act with pride means that we are acting committedly together with precision, respect, integrity, determination, and enthusiasm. Our mode of entre, this is our, um, our affirmation song, is, goes something like this. We live resourcefully and sustainably we embody peace love and joy we effectively advocate for meaningful change and genuine heart connection we know who we are as a family we are strong and self-assured we are confident and motivated. We are happy, vibrant, and full of life. We totally love and accept ourselves. We are enough and all we can be. We are committed to taking action. We act with pride every day. Just a little something to get your day started. Our guiding questions today are, what is the ideal morning routine? We are going to be utilizing that ACT matrix to explore possibilities and make some decisions around this question. Our second question is, what will we do to make our mornings more organized and fun? And we're going to use the PAX tool, shared vision to explore possibilities and make decisions around that question. And then finally, we're going to continue this question that we started last week. Where do we want to be in 10 years? And um, I hope that we can come together and commit to ourselves and each other to really um, dig down deep and begin writing the stories of our future selves. All right, so let us dig into this first guiding question, which is, what is the ideal morning routine? And we're going back to the ACT matrix to explore this question and really start to think about um, the decisions that we could and what we could do um, as a family. All right, so... Let's go ahead and get started here. As always, we start in the lower right-hand box. The first thing that we talk about when we are using the ACT matrix is our priorities, values, and goals. Okay, This really centers us and focuses us on what is most important to us as individuals and families and as a community. We will then go to box two, where we'll talk about actions, the things that we can do to move towards our values, priorities, and goals. Then we'll move on to box three, where we'll talk about those actions, those things that we might do or might experience that cause us to move away from our priorities, values, and goals. And then finally, we'll um, talk about those thoughts and feelings and barriers that might get in, in the way, the things that we will notice when we're moving away from our priorities, values, and goals that will give us a clue that we need to get back in alignment, we need to recalibrate um, and get to get ourselves back 
on track. So let's get started with this question of our day. So our guiding question today is what is the ideal morning routine? And as we talked about before, a good way to start this conversation with your family is to, you know, sit down in a place that's comfortable for you around the table in a some, you know, in some sort of circle where you can all see each other's faces and be working together in one space. Um, and then pose the question to the group. What is the ideal morning routine? Give people an opportunity to think about this for themselves, maybe a minute or two to draw something on a piece of paper, write some words, or just close their eyes and visualize the ideal morning routine. If it was perfectly perfect, what would that look, sound, and feel like? Um, and that really helps to clarify what our priorities, values, and goals are around this question. So let's let's do a little bit of practice. So if we were sitting together as a group in a family and we had this question in front of us, what is the ideal morning routine? We would go around the group and give each other, give ourselves and each other the opportunity to share their input. Everybody, everybody's input is valuable. In every seat, there is a leader. No matter what your age is, it's important that we always go back to that core value that every member of the group has a valuable voice and their input is essential to ensuring that we're making shared decisions um, in a way that uplifts, inspires, and honors others and their input. So it's important to um, set up some clear expectations and how we flow through this conversation. So we might give everybody a couple minutes to think on their own and then take and then have each person will go around in a circle and each person will say one word or one phrase, have a very, you know, kind of a, a, a clear beginning and end for when their input is, um, is taking place. So we don't have one one or one person who is dominating the conversation. We, need, we want to ensure that we have shared time and shared space so everybody feels and is ensured that they are heard and the input is um, incorporated into the plan. Okay, so we're going to start with number one. What are our priorities, values, goals when it comes to designing an ideal morning routine? So we might say that in the morning, it is really important to us that we get up, that we, let's see, I'm going to do this one. Okay. So we're going to wake up by eight o'clock and get dressed and ready for the day. Okay. So that might be a priority in your family. The time is, is relatively arbitrary, right? Every, every family is different. Every family has a different schedule and a different routine. That might be wake up and get, you know, wake up by six o'clock and get dressed and ready for the day. It might be wake up by 10 a.m. and get dressed and ready for the day. This is really about what works best for your family. So let's just imagine that this was our, you know, this is our family, and we're talking about this question, what's the ideal morning routine, and the input by, um, you know, one of the members or one or more of the members is that waking up by 8 a.m. and getting dressed and getting ready for the day is kind of our ideal, um, our ideal time schedule. Let's say another value, another priority is to be ready. Um, to begin working by 9 a.m. Okay, so that gives us, so our ideal schedule we're saying gives us about an hour in the morning to get ourselves up, ready, do our hygiene routines, and um, be ready for, um, be ready for working. Okay, and then finally, the ideal morning routine is to get all of our core academics 
done and out of the way by 12, by 12 noon. Okay, so let's say that's our ideal morning routine. We're going to get up by 8 a.m. We're going to be ready. We're going to be working by 9 a.m. We're going to be executing upon our um, schedule of activities for the day. Um, and our goal is, our ideal would be to get all of our core academics done and out of the way by noon. And so if we were discussing this as a family and we came to this, you know, we came to these conclusions together, like, yes, if we got up and we got ready and we were ready to work by nine and we put in three hardcore hours in the morning of our core academics, this is our core work that we need to get done, we're committed to doing it, stay on track, make progress. Awesome. And then by noon, that means that we are going to be ready to move on with the rest of our day. So we can use our afternoons. We can go have lunch together. We can go on adventures. We can do hands-on projects. We can really be working on those application tasks, right? So we have our core academics in the morning. We're, you know, we're studying, we're focusing. We have, you know, these the lesson plans that we're going through, the uh, more structured uh, work time to keep flowing through the curriculum. And then the afternoons we're dedicating to applying those skills to, um, to activities and things that are valuable to us as individuals to help us learn and grow together. Okay, so then we go up to box two. Okay, now we know kind of the, the priorities. This is kind of what, you know, the overall structure of our day, how we want things to look. We're going to wake up by eight. We're going to get up. We're going to get ready. However that, whatever that means for us, um, we're going to be talking about those specific actions in just a second. We're going to be ready to begin our work by 9 a.m. And we're going to get all of our core academics done and out of the way by noon. That is our, those are our priorities and our, our goals. Awesome. Okay, so now let's talk about the actions we can take that, we, um, that will be moving us towards this ideal. Okay, so what do we need to do? If we want to get up by 8 a.m. dressed and ready for the day, what do we need to do that? Do to do that? Maybe we need to set our alarms for 7.30. Okay. We set our alarms for 7.30. That gives us about a half an hour to press the news and get one last snuggle in. Um, in our house, we call that snoodling. We snooze cuddle <laughs> and um, get, you know, ease our way into our mornings. So set our alarms for 7.30. That gives us a little bit of extra snooze time so we can get ourselves ready for ready to get up and get out of bed by 8 o'clock. Um, some other things we might we might do um, to help ourselves get ready for the day um, is to have our clothes set out, right? We might set out our clothes um, and any other things we need to get ready. So then in the morning, we're not... Um, we're not kind of stressed and, you know, run, rushing around trying to find things. We've got everything ready for us, ready for the day. To be ready and begin working at 9 a.m., um, maybe something that we decide that is important for us to do is to um, prep, uh, prep our work schedule the day before. So we have our... Um, our materials organized even before the day begins. Okay. Um, another thing that we could do is we could make sure that the um, TV and electronics are turned off by 9 a.m. so we can focus. Let's see, what are some other things that we can do to set ourselves up for success, help us move towards this ideal goal? <clears throat> uh, we're going to have a um, quick breakfast. Uh, 
available for snacking and grazing in the morning. Um, one thing that's important to think about is that, you know, everybody's bodies are different. They're, you know, in our, in our culture, in our society, we have this kind of longstanding belief that we, you know, we've got to get up and we've got to eat this big breakfast before we go out for the day. Well, that, you know, that might very well have been super important <laughs> when we were waking, you know, when uh, we were up in our farming cultures and um, we're leaving the house and not going to be, you know, we needed our, all of the energy we could get before we left the house for the day. But the reality is, is that you're homeschooling, you're a homeschooling family, you're on your own schedule. And then, you know, syncing up with our natural, uh, our natural rhythms um, of eating and sleeping uh, can, can actually aid us in, in creating a more um, meaningful homeschool environment uh, because we're we're really honor listening to and honoring our bodies. Um, so having things available, healthy, nutritious breakfast items that are quick and easy to grab. Um, there's not a lot of cleanup, and we can just like we can grab. We can if we're hungry, we can get a big glass of water. Um, you know, get our digest take drink a big glass of water and get our digestion moving in the morning. Um, and then have snacks available. So as people are hungry in the morning, then they can eat. Um, they can eat as needed. Um, okay, so that's great. We can. So those are some things that we can do to move us towards our our values and our goals and our priorities. We're going to set our alarms for seven thirty. We're going to set our clothes out um, and any other things that we need to get ready the night before. We're going to prepare our work schedule the day before and have our materials organized. So by the time we're done with our work, we already know what we're going to be doing for the next day. So it's done and out of the way. We're going to make sure that all TVs and electronics are turned off by 9 a.m. So we can focus um, and maybe maybe turning some music on is a good, you know, that's something that you know for your family. So we have some um, calming uh, and preferred music goes on. Um, so I'm a person who really values music while working. And um, I find that very helpful in keeping me focused and, and motivated and organized and moving forward. So that might be something that is also applicable to your family. All right. So now let's go on um, to our third question in the ACT matrix, which is what are the things that we might do that would get in the way and move us away from our core values, our priorities, our values and goals that we've set as, as a shared, um, as a shared group. So what are things that we might do that would cause us to not wake up by 8 a.m. and not be dressed and ready for the day and not be ready to begin working by 9 a.m. and not get all of our core academics out of the way by 12? Um, what are some things that we might do that would get in the way? Oh, we might forget to set the alarm. Okay. We might um, uh, have our materials are disorganized and all over the place. Um, other things we might, um, <clears throat> uh, we might spend too much time uh, cleaning, cleaning up and organizing in the morning. That's too, that takes away from our time. Um, we might stay up too late. So even when our alarm goes off and we get our 30 minutes of snooze in, um, it might just not be enough. And we might be really tired in the morning. What are some other things that we might do that would move us away from our priorities, and values, and goals of getting all of our core academics out of the way? Um, we might get distracted with electronics or other, it gets distracted with social media. 
we might get sidetracked working on a preferred um, activity or project, okay? That would really be better suited for the afternoon. So if we, if we are saying like, we need to commit to staying focused and organized and getting our core academics done every single day, get them done in the morning, get those things that we are, you know, they're less preferred and, you know, kind of have to like, Oh, push push ourselves to get them done. Um, but you know, when those things are done and they're out of the way, we can get those things, boom, done early in the morning, get them off of our plate. And then in the afternoon, we have a lot more time to really dive in and uh, put all of our energy into those projects and activities that are more fun and focused on the things that really bring us um, joy and give us life. Okay. So those are some things that we might do that would move us away. Forget to set the alarm. Our materials are disorganized. We spend too much cleaning and organizing in the morning. We stay up too late. So we're tired. We're distracted with electronics and maybe TV on in the background. We might get sidetracked working on other, on our preferred projects or activities. So maybe we have our, we have our day, we have our schedule out of order. So the things that we you know, quote unquote, need to get done on a day to day basis, kind of get pushed to the side in um, in lieu of those the things that are more fun. So this is the kind of a thinking about how we prioritize and organize our schedule in our day. And so now let's think about those thoughts and feelings that might come up when we're doing things that are moving away from our priorities, values, and goals. We might be thinking that we're not good at this. Um, we're lazy and never get things done that are important. We might think, like, think things like our homeschool's a failure. We might as well just go back to the brick and mortar setting. But we know, we know that there's a reason that you've chosen to homeschool your children this year. And um, whether it has to do with the pandemic or whether it has to do ch with challenges that you and your, your family and your children face within the public school and the brick and mortar setting, um, we know that there are issues to overcome and that that might not be the best decision. So, but those are thoughts that come up, right? That you might feel like you're failing. You might feel like you're not doing the right thing. You're not adequate. Um, Oh, our family is just too just organized. Okay. So again, the, the power of the ACT matrix is it, it helps guide our conversation around important questions, you know, questions that are important to us as groups. And it gives us a framework to make shared decisions in a very structured way. And as we begin and get more experience with the ACT matrix and really thinking about questions and problems within this framework, it helps us more easily have those conversations that we need to have in the moment. So many times we avoid having conversations because they're hard and we don't know the structure and it's hard for us to have like a clear beginning and end. And so this gives us a clear beginning and end way to have a conversation. We can do this, you know, sometimes we can do this really quickly. It might take us less than 30 minutes just to bust through, get, you know, get some answers down on paper. And it doesn't mean that we have a final decision by the end of this 30 minutes, by the time we get to the end of this conversation, we're going to have a final decision, but it gets us one step closer. We've talked about some things. We've talked about our priorities, values, and goals. We've for really listened to ourselves and each other. Um, we've gotten our input. We've gotten it down on paper. 
this is a great way to empower and inspire and uplift each other. So we're, you know, we're really focused on the, the most important thing, which is working together to create a homeschool environment that is the most peaceful and productive and happy and healthy for everyone. All right, so now let's get to our second guiding question, which is what will we do to make our mornings more organized and fun? If we're starting our days out in a fun, positive, proactive manner, then that really gets the stage set for the day where um, things can be more, more flowing, they can be more fun, they can be productive. And we really are, you know, trying to find a way that we can come together as a family. And so the PAX tool shared vision is a really, really great option for coming together and facilitating a conversation that helps us answer, um, you know, answer these questions and really get down to the nitty gritty of what do we as individuals and a family and as a community what do we want to see, feel, hear, and do more of? And conversely, what do we want to see, feel, hear, and do less of? So let's really, let's get down and explore this question. What will we do to make our mornings more organized and fun? So we're going to set this question up for our families. We are going to um, begin this conversation at the on the top part of this chart where we're going to get everyone's input on what they want to see, feel, hear, and do more of to make our mornings more organized and fun. So again, we come together, we sit in a circle, we can have a big chart paper on the table, whatever modality works best for you, but having that face-to-face -face time coming together in a circle around the table where we can all really listen to each other. Um, so, you know, we're not lecturing to each other. We're not, we're not arguing. We're not fighting. We're coming together in a positive and proactive way to have conversations and guide our conversations in a way that is um, formative and helpful and supports effective decision-making and collaborative problem-solving. So let's dig in. So we'll give, ourselves a, we'll give ourselves a couple minutes at the beginning of the conversation um, to reflect individually on this question and think to ourselves first before sharing how. In our agreements, we talked about slowing down right? Taking a pause. This is where that comes in. This is what we call silent counsel. We take time to silently reflect upon the question ourselves. We can formulate our thoughts in a way that we can easily convey and communicate our, our points to others. If we're feeling rushed, that's when we get reactive and flexive responding. That sometimes is you know, kind of at this surface level, um, emotional responding as opposed to present moment in the um, focused responding that is really more meaningful and uh, to us as individuals. So take a pause, give, or, give yourself time, a couple minutes to think about this question. What will we do to make our mornings more nice and fun? What do I want to see, feel, hear, and do more of? What do I want to see, feel, hear, and do less of? And then let's start with getting our input from everybody, putting it down on, on the paper. All right. What do we, what would we want to see more of if our mornings were more organized and fun? We would see more people working together. We would see more accomplishments. We would see more checks on our list, checks off our list, checking things off our list. Um, we would see more focused work time. 
we would see <clears throat> people collaborating. Okay. We would see more smiles. We might see more calm bodies. Okay. We might see more of each other. If we're calm and focused and ready to go, we might be actually seeing more of each other rather than being in our own spaces. If our mornings were more organized and fun, how might we be feeling? We might be feeling calm. We might be feeling centered. We might be feeling happy. We might be feeling organized. We might be feeling uh, enthusiastic. Enthusiastic. We might be feeling motivated. We might be feeling pumped. We might be feeling jazzed. <laughs> All these fun, all these good words that are like, we're feeling good, we're feeling productive. We are getting stuff done. And what might we be, what might we be hearing? If we were having, if our mornings were more organized and fun, what might be, what might we be hearing? What we might be hearing laughter. We might be hearing chatting. We might be hearing kind morning greetings. We might be hearing quiet working. <laughs> we might be hearing pencils moving. And we might hear computers typing. I guess it would be fingers typing. Computers themselves aren't typing. Um, if we are organized and fun, we might hear pages turning. We might hear good music in the background. And we might hear, what else would we hear if we're having, if we're more organized and more fun? We hear more um, collaboration. And finally, what might we be what might we be doing more of if our days were our mornings were more organized and fun? We might be doing more work. We might be um, completing more lessons. We might be doing more of our best, our best work. We might be doing more collaborating. We might be doing more um, shared space. What else might we, we be doing more of if our mornings were organized and fun? We might be doing more visiting. If we're having, if we're more organized and things are more fun, that means that usually means that we're feeling we're doing things that are more productive. Our days, our mornings are flowing better, so we have more time to do the things. Um, if our mornings were more organized and more fun, we might be doing some more dancing, especially if we've got some good music playing. So now let's jump to the bottom section here where we get input from everybody about what we would be seeing, feeling, hearing, and doing, seeing, feeling, hearing, and doing less of if our mornings were not organized and they were not fun. What would we be seeing? Oh, we would be seeing nobody. <laughs> nobody is ready. We might be seeing 
people who are uh, grumpy. We might be seeing if things weren't organized and things aren't, aren't fun, we might see more bad faces. We might see more chaos. We might see more disorganization. We might see more running away. Okay. As a reminder, we want to have way more things in our um, more section in, than in our less section. Most of the time we can turn our we can turn our lesses into mores. So we'll go ahead and stop there. What do we want? What will um, what would we want to be feeling less of? So if we are not feeling, if we're not organized and we're not fun, these are things that we would be feeling, and this is what we want to feel less of. We um, might feel scattered. We might be feeling unproductive. We might be feeling frustrated. Um, and we might be feeling grouchy. And we, if things were not organized and not fun, might be feeling like giving up. And so if things were not organized and things were not fun, what would we be hearing? Those are the things that we want to hear less of. We might hear yelling and arguing and complaining and back talking Ooh. and slamming doors. And then finally, what would we want to be doing less of, okay? Um, or what would we be doing if we're not organized and not fun? And these are the things we want to do less of. Less fighting. Less... Um, uh, wasted time. Okay. Things that we may be doing um, are we're off task, and if things were not organized and not fun, we might be doing some ever uh, watching TV or on electronics. <clears throat> so maybe, you know, doing, doing those things that are um, easy and take our mind off of the pain and suffering um, are things that we might do if things are not organized and not fun and things that we would want to be doing uh, less of um, to get us back on track and get us to a point where we're having more fun and we're more organized and we're getting things done. All right, so let's go ahead and review the packs, those things that we want to do more of and we want to see, feel, hear, and do more of. We want to see more working together, accomplishments, checking things off our list, focused on our work time, we're collaborating, we're smiling, we're calm, we're with each other, we're feeling calm, centered, happy, organized, enthusiastic, motivated, pumped, jazzed, and productive. We're laughing, we're chatting, we're greeting each other, we're quietly working, we can hear pencils writing, computers typing, pages turning, we hear good music, and we hear collaboration happening. We're, we're doing things, we're getting our work tasks done, we're completing our lessons, we're doing our best work, we're collaborating together, we're sharing space, we're visiting, and we're dancing, celebrating ourselves and each other. What we want to see, hear, feel, and do less of. We want to see less people being not ready. We want to see less grumpy, mad, chaos, disorganization, and running away. We want to see less scatter, feel less scattered, feel less unproductive, frustrated, grouchy. We want to 
We don't want to feel like we want to give up. We don't want to hear yelling, arguing, complaining, back talking, slamming doors. And we most definitely don't want to be fighting, wasting time, being off task, wasting time watching TV and electronics, doing those things that we can do once we're done with all the important high priority work. So I hope these, the, um, the practice with these tools, the ACT matrix to talk about our ideal homeschool, our ideal morning routine, and then using the PAX tool shared vision to you know, get um, to dig a little bit deeper on what, you know, what things we can see here, feel and do more of to make when our mornings are more organized and fun. I hope that was helpful. All right, so last but not least, our third guiding question um, is, where do we want to be in 10 years? And we started talking about this a little bit last week, and I encouraged you all to take some time to just really start free writing or free thinking um, about, um, about these questions and how they might apply to your life. And so... Um, last week, we started with the in 10 years, I will, um, and gave ourselves a couple minutes to think about that and then write, um, write our beginning thoughts. And so now let's move on to the second question. In five years, I will. What will in five years? In five years, it will be 2026. We'll be getting ready to enter into the year 2027. What will you be doing or what do you hope to be doing? Let's take a moment, pause the video for a few minutes and just take some time to free think and free write about what you will be doing, what you hope to be doing in five years as we're getting ready to enter into the year 2027. Okay, I hope that you had a good opportunity to really start to dig into that question because what's really important about this exercise that I want, I hope that you are starting to see is that when we start to think about and talk about and plan about and write about and draw and envision what our lives are going to look like. It really helps us stay oriented to what is most important to us because as we look forward, as we project forward into the future 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, however far that you want to go, it gets us to start really honing in on it and thinking about and focusing on those things that are the most important to us. Those things that bring value and joy to our lives. So many times we get caught up in the here and now or in, you know, kind of living in a stress state. And so it's easy to get um, hyper focused on just this little kind of, you know, the little bubble of what's happening right now. But sometimes what that does is it causes us to lose focus on the big picture and we end up just kind of spinning our circles, spinning in circles. And I think that probably resonates with a lot of you. Many people that I've talked to have experienced this in their lives where they, you know, their focus narrows onto kind of whatever stress state they're in. And then their whole life becomes consumed with that thing um, that, that is happening in their lives and lose sight of the big picture and end up spinning their wheels and you know, wake up one day and, oh my gosh, it's been five years. It's been 10 years. What have I been doing with my time? What have I been doing with my life? Um, and one quick and easy thing to do is just really slow down and take time to write it out, write out that 10 year plan. And don't just write out the 10 year plan, the story of your future self, and then put it on a shelf somewhere. Revisit it and come back to um, come back to that which you have written um, about yourself and your dreams and your visions and your future, and rewrite that story every year, or revisit that story every year. Edit it a little bit um, with you know the new things that have come up and new realities. Life happens and things change and plans change. 
but that does not take away from the importance and the value of going through this exercise of taking time to envision what you want your life to look like for yourself, your family, and your community in the next 10 years. I hope that was helpful. All right, friends, we are at the end of our time together. Thank you so much for joining us as we are continuing to explore different ways that we can use the ACT matrix and the PACS tool to share vision, to make decisions together and um, establish expectations of each other for ourselves, for each other, for our families and for our community. Our invitation to you is to come join our homeschool collective. We have our weekly workshops. We have our daily challenges. If you are a collective member, you have direct access to me and our team. If you need to, if you need help troubleshooting something, we are here for you. That is our purpose. Our ikigai, our reason for being is to support you on your homeschool journey to help guide you and facilitate, empower you, because we know that you are capable of teaching your children and helping them become the most peaceful, productive, fun, happy, healthy adults that they can be. Um, and it is with your guidance and your leaderships as families that we will get there. And so please keep coming back, share a mission with your friends. Um, if you have the resources, please consider donating to our GoFundMe. This will open up so many more opportunities for our families to have access to high quality direct instruction curriculum that is essential to overcome and fill in those gaps that are ever widening. They were wide before COVID hit the gaps between where kids need to be and where they could be. And the reason is, is that we are not using the right curriculum. We're not following the research and the science and the educational research that has been done over the past 50 years. So thank you for your commitment to our homeschool collective. Thank you for your commitment to direct instruction. Thank you for your commitment to precision teaching and PACs and facilitating self-directed education because we know that when children and families are in charge of uh, designing their future and designing their paths, we know that the outcomes are so much more profound and so much more significant and we are here to help you and guide you and your family along that path um, to help you be the best family that you can be and to help your children be set up for success so they can have the most likelihood of having a peaceful, productive, healthy, and happy future. Thank you as always. We love you and we hope to see you soon.